Hi everybody, Coach Tiffany here. I'm on a little bit late. I had decided to try to do these at 12.30 and um, I was having coffee with somebody and got completely engrossed in the conversation and completely spaced it. So here I am. Uh, if you're coming on, sorry the lighting is so weird, I'm in my car. <laughs> We're having one of those like bright rainy days. I might have to put on my sunglasses. <laughs> anyway, um, so today I wanted to talk about body trust. It's kind of what's been on my mind this week. And um, I think it's a really important topic. I think it's something that we are not really encouraged as women um, or people even. I don't think men are really encouraged either to really gain um, and build a trusting relationship with our bodies. So one of the principles of intuitive eating is respecting our body. Um, and another, and a lot of the other principles touch on what's called body attunement. So really becoming more aware of our bodies and what our bodies need. And sorry, I'm so distracted by the lighting. It's really, it's really bad. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. So, you know, what, listening to what our bodies need. So I was just actually talking with somebody who is doing some intermittent fasting and, you know, we were talking about how for women, especially, um, it can be really challenging and how it's not always the thing that serves us best, right? It really depends on your body and what your, if you have like adrenal fatigue or um, if you're an athlete, how to fit that in or if you like to work out, right? If you're a mom, a new mom, um, you need those carbs, right? And so um, you need the, the pick me up the fuel in the morning. So, um, oh, hi. Um, Laura's on. Hi, Laura. So anyway, we're talking about body trust today. We're talking about how um, one of the principles of intuitive eating is respecting our body. And what does that look like? How to do that? So it really is important to start becoming more attuned to our bodies. And a lot of times we can be, um, we, we treat our bodies as an adversary, right? And we treat our bodies as something that we need to manage or control or that's not good enough or that um, doesn't fit into the mold, right? And that can really erode having trust with our body. And so how do we start to do that? How do we start to build that when we recognize that it would be valuable to do that? Um, I think it's a, a big jump for a lot of people to just say like, oh, you need to start loving your body, right? Because, um, you know, maybe there's things that we are, maybe we're struggling with pain or maybe we're struggling with other issues with our bodies. Maybe we have been told that our bodies are um, not the right size or shape or, um, you know, that some of us have illnesses that, you know, our body doesn't function the way we want it to sometimes. It can be frustrating. So starting to look at what are actions that I can take? What are consistent daily actions that I can take to start building trust with my body? Well, it takes being respectful of our body, which again is about action, right? And um, it includes things like, you know, getting regular body work. It, re it requires getting movement when we can. It requires doing movement that feels good to us, right? It requires listening to those messages that our bodies are giving us. So that's where the body attunement piece comes in. Um, and this is a really key part in building trust. It's starting to acknowledge that yes, these messages my body um, is giving me, it, it, my body's giving me this message for a reason, a valid reason, and honoring that reason, listening to those messages. However, what I found is that a lot of people really struggle with this because we're not modeled or taught that being connected to our body or attuned to our body is a priority or a, a, um, a valuable thing to do. And we're also taught that, um, you know, it's important to like go, 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 be in our head, make other people happy, right? And so making ourselves a priority isn't something that we're, um, we have validated out in the world very much. And the other piece of it is when we haven't been connected to our body, it can be really challenging to, it can be uncomfortable to actually be in our body. So pain is one of those reasons you might kind of stay in your head or be out of your body or not want to be connected. Um, things like trauma in our past for some people who maybe are more empathic in nature um, you know taking on other people's energy that can make us want to kind of be out of our body because it doesn't feel good right so we have to learn how to deal with those things how to get grounded and centered in ourselves and it can also just feel really foreign like it can just be like how do I even do that right <laughs> so I'm going to talk about some of the things that I have done personally. Um, and, you know, please remember this is a journey. I think sometimes people look at what I'm doing and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, she's meditating every morning and all these things, right? Um, but this is, a, this is a journey I've been on for 
20 plus years. Some of you know that I've been um, in recovery for 20 years and I also had a daughter really young and that really motivated me to want to take care of myself. So it's, um, I went from, you know, being 20 years old with a toddler smoking two packs of cigarettes a day and drinking 64 ounces of Mountain Dew to now being the kind of person that meditates every day and eats kale every day, right? <laughs> so it's been a work in progress. So please don't um, compare yourself or judge yourself for what you are or aren't doing at this point compared to other people. It's all about where you're at on your path and what works for you and what's important to you. So there are definitely times where we need to just do our best to get through the day, be loving to ourselves, you know, maybe give ourselves a hug, wrap ourselves in a blanket, whatever we need to do. Um, and it's really about honoring where we're at. So please, you know, know that what I do isn't what you should do. It's um, what your body needs or what you, what feels good to you, right? So um, for me personally, I do, I spend an hour every morning. I do the Miracle Morning, um, which is, you know, we meditate. Well, it's not, it's a, a book and I follow that structure. So I meditate every morning. I journal, do affirmations and visualizations. I do some stretching, some exercises for my back injury. And um, so that's exercise and then reading as well. And I don't do it perfectly. Um, there's definitely times where I, every now and then I would just forget. Um, or have something going on and I totally space it. Most of the time I'm able to get time in, even if it's five minutes. But what I've really found is that meditation time has been critical. It has really allowed me, and I just listened to, um, I listened to uh, this Kitan Kira um, meditation on uh, YouTube, or I listened to like a Live Awake podcast, Sarah Blondin. She has the most beautiful grounding voice and it just feels like nourishment for my soul, right? So, um, and I used to use another app as well. So I, I don't meditate in silence. I don't do well with that. Sometimes I do now, but it's been, I've been meditating consistently for a couple years. Um, but I always find that time to just reconnect with myself. I'm currently taking a class um, called Thriving as an Empath. That's done by Laura Rao. She is, um, intuitive and a business also business minded and all these things and she's just got a really cool mind that I appreciate because I have the science part and the um, business part of my brain or the um, the creative part and then the sciencey part business part so I do that I also go floating I go to you know it's a sensory depri deprivation tank I go to acupuncture regularly these are all ways that I have learned to be back in my body and reconnect with my body and yet I still find myself like out here, you know, like, especially at work. Some of you know that I am um, leaving my, my hospital job where I do case management in the emergency room. Um, I definitely, after one of those shifts, will find like, oh, I haven't really been in tune with myself. Um, and so I, I think it's important to know that there's going to be situations where it's more challenging than others. You're um, on a beach in Hawaii. You're probably going to feel pretty connected to yourself and pretty relaxed. Um, so... Anyways, the idea is to find practices that are consistent and daily that allow you to be reconnected to your body and um, kind of build up a tolerance, so to speak, or build up a, a stamina for it. And that is one of the ways you can start to build that trust because your body's like, okay, you're going to listen to me, right? Um, another way is using some of the intuitive eating principles, like using a hunger scale. So checking in with yourself, making sure that when you're hungry, you actually feed yourself. So giving yourself unconditional permission to eat and per permission to eat any food. So, you know, not saying anything is off limits, just saying, um, I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. I'm going to try to stop when I'm full. Um, if I am eating in a way that feels out of control, I'm going to check in with myself about what's going on here in a non-judgmental way, right? So that's one of the other ways that we build trust with our body is letting go of judgment because it allows us to really honor what's going on with our body. So, you know, if we're feeling the need to eat a bunch of carbs, there might be a reason, right? You might be having um, stress or you might be having, maybe you didn't sleep well last night or you might be having um, pain, right? So there's a lot of reasons. So if we're able to let go of judgment around it, we can honor the need and start to understand more about what's going on with our body. Some of the other ways that we build trust with our body is not fighting with it, right? So um, working on that negative self-talk that a lot of us have that is really 
um, brought on through the cultural messages, the, the diet industry, and um, you know the idea that there's a good or bad, um, there's a right size to be. So one of the things I've started to do is talk with people about not commenting on my body um, or on other people's bodies. I don't think that it's helpful. And um, that doesn't mean we can't talk about struggles with our body or challenges or um, be honest about our feelings. It just means that for me, it feels harmful if someone comments on my weight or um, if someone, you know, is focused on that as what makes me good, right, or bad. Because I've worked really hard to get away from those things and I feel like we're inundated with those messages all the time. So those are some ideas about how to start building body trust. Um, I think feeding yourself is actually really huge, right? So we get hungry and we tell our body like, I shouldn't be hungry or I don't have time for that. It's not a priority. Um, or somehow our hunger and our desire for food is bad, but we need to eat multiple times a day, every day for our whole life. And so giving ourselves that un unconditional permission to eat and honoring our hunger actually over time will help us reduce those episodes where we eat in a way that feels out of control, right? And it will help us to build trust with our body. It'll help our body to know when I'm hungry and I put out that signal, I'm going to get food. I'm going to get what I need. Um, and so it can really help kind of calm down that inner rebel and it can help us to really provide the nutrients and the nourishment that our body is craving or desiring. So, um, you know, so those are some of the barriers and that's some of the things that you can do. There are plenty of things that you can do that aren't related to food. Um, again, they're, they're more getting connected with yourself um, and just doing self-care practices as well. Or there, That's another thing that really helps with building that trust. The key is really consistency and it is um, a willingness to try something different and move away from the struggle and, and instead put that energy into just really caring for ourselves. Not easy to do. There's still times where I have some negative self-talk, but I have started to really know deeply that it is about, you know, the diet industry trying to sell us on this idea that small is good, right? And larger is not as good or as bad. Because if we believe that, we're going to pay them money, right? We're going to buy their products. And unfortunately, has infiltrated our healthcare system. Um, you know, there are a lot of studies out there that show that it's actually people who are um, in the kind of overweight category or even obese category with the BMI, that that doesn't necessarily indicate health. Um, so, you know, check out the Health at Any Size movement. It's much more about caring for ourselves and working toward positive health out outcomes rather than weight. Um, so when we become weight focused, it's just harm it's harmful to ourselves, to our psyche, right? We become battling with our bodies and when we focus on trying to lose weight specifically, we actually, um, like when we're dieting, we're actually, studies show that you're actually at risk for being, gaining all that weight back plus some. So if you zoom out over time, people who go, who diet gain weight. So dieting actually causes us to gain weight. So it's not that we failed or that we're bad. It's that the diets are flawed and broken and then we gain weight, right? Which keeps us in this cycle. So it's important, especially for me as a healthcare provider, to shift out of that thinking and quit um, stigmatizing people for their body size and recognize that that isn't the true indicator of health. And that if we focus on caring for our bodies, instead and using health outcomes that actually are health interventions that actually improve outcomes that we can help reduce that stigma and shame associated with body image um, which actually leads to improved health so um, so the reason I do this work a lot of you know is that I want the women around me and the women who are doing amazing work in the world who are leaders who are entrepreneurs who are nurses who are mothers and um, partners and friends to quit wasting all of this emotional and mental energy like fighting with themselves and fighting with food and start to spend it truly caring for ourselves so that we have the energy and the stamina that we need, right? 
so that we can um, do the work that we're meant to do in the world and have a positive ripple effect, um, you know, a positive influence, shift this dynamic, and um, truly start to have a greater impact in the world. Because right now, our impact is diminished by the amount of energy that we put into fighting with ourselves instead of just um, caring for ourselves. So. I know it's not always easy, and I want you to know that I, I've been there too. Like I said, I used to drink 64 ounces of Mountain Dew for breakfast. <laughs> it's amazing I have teeth. Um, and I didn't have any idea how to feed myself, and I did the all or nothing eating for a really long time, and I felt like I was a failure, and I beat myself up. And I'm really blessed to have found, to have gotten to a place in my life where I was so broken down that I had to make my health my number one priority without shame or guilt. And that led me to finding intuitive eating. So, um, and this intuitive eating has completely transformed the way that I relate to myself and the way that I relate to food. So I'm pretty passionate about it, if you can't tell. Um, this time right now is for, for live coaching. You know, I do other work as well um, with people one-on-one. -on -one. And I want to be as supportive as possible to you, so never hesitate to reach out, ask questions on the group. Um, you know, feel free to send me private messages if you're not wanting to post something that's personal to you as a question on the group. And um, let me know if there's other ways that I can support you. I will be having an intuitive eating course that I'm going to be launching probably in January. I'm going to try to get it done before then, but it'll probably be January. I'm going to start doing some workshops around intuitive eating and then the course will be uh, probably a 12-week online course where I go over all of the intuitive eating principles. So if you're wanting to learn more about that, um, you know, I'll be posting about those things and I would love to hear any questions you have about it, feedback, any way that you feel you could benefit from, you know, like any, if you're wanting to hear more about this, um, specific topics that you're wanting to hear more about, I always love having your input. So um, I hope that you have a good day and know that, you know, it's a full moon last night and it's raining, the seasons are shifting, a lot of us are struggling, um, you're not alone. If I were there, I would give you a hug, but um, maybe just give yourself a hug and I hope you have a good rest of your day.